Thank you for your nice introduction, Jason. So good morning, everyone. Uh, I'm Ling Yi Li, and thank you for having this opportunity to be the first, uh, to, to have the first thought of today to present our paper. So yeah, yeah. Uh, th this is an a SOK paper, and this is a joint work with my advisor, Bo Li, and my co-advisor, Tao Xie. In machine learning safety research, we can see that uh, adversarial robustness is a lasting topic, uh, where powerful deep neural networks can be very easily fooled by adversary examples, so which are tiny corrupted perturbations that can make a model to give wrong predictions. Uh, adversary robustness issue has posted severe safety threats like in autonomous driving. So surrounding this issue, in the last few years, we can see there's an arms race between defenders and attackers, uh, where existing defenses are usually bypassed by subsequent attacks. So how to end this arms race? One possible way is to achieve certified robustness. So where we can prove that the adversary example doesn't exist. In this SOK, we provide the first systematization of knowledge on certified robustness for deep neural networks. Uh, as an overview, our SOK provides the first taxonomy, a summary, an in-depth discussion, and the largest scale benchmark. Based on our SOK, let me give a short overview of certified robustness for deep neural networks. The goal of this NAF research is to provide robustness guarantees for deep neural networks against adversary examples. So what are adversary examples? Um, canonically, adversary examples are similar inputs but may fool the model to give certain wrong predictions. There are many types of adversary examples, like by adding tiny perturbations or by conducting semantic transformations to achieve so. So what type of adversary examples do we aim to defend? And what type of adversary examples uh, do we aim to provide certification against? In this work, we focus on works that provide uh, uh, certified robustness against p-norm constraint perturbations. Since this type of adversary examples is widely studied and their techniques are generalizable to other types of adversary examples. So, as a formal definition, for p-norm constrained perturbations, uh, we are given a data point x from the test set with a ground truth label y. And we aim to defend against all adversary examples that are picked from a ball surrounding the data point, which has a radius epsilon. Then uh, it reduces to check whether for any perturbed adversary input from the ball, shown in purple here, the model F will always predict correctly. So the goal is to compute a larger radius R, such that for any perturbation delta within this radius R, the deep learning system F always predicts correctly. A larger certified radius means a tighter certification and a better robustness guarantee. So how to compute such robust certification? For existing methods, our SOK provides a comprehensive taxonomy. So I will briefly introduce two types of methods based on our, on our taxonomy, linear relaxation and randomized smoothing. The linear relaxation combined with branch and bound is the tightest and the most scalable certification for generic deep neural networks. And randomized smoothing requires some modification to the model inference, but it is more scalable than linear relaxation method. So first, for linear relaxation method, we need to inspect the neural network's architecture. We can see that in common neural networks, the architecture has a hierarchical structure. The first layer is in the input, then each layer performs an affine transformation and then applies an activation function to each component. Usually, we use the ReLU function as the activation function. Then, propagating layer by layer, the last layer outputs C confidence scores corresponding to C classes. Then, the class 
the model has the highest score is used as the predicted class. So we can see the only nonlinearity in the whole pipeline is the value activation function. So to conduct robust certification for this common neural network, uh, we can study the only nonlinear part. As shown in the figure, uh, this now for research uh, usually conducts uh, linear relaxation for the value activation function. Like we can design a lower line and an upper line to bound the input for each value neuron. So by applying this linear relaxation of value, we can reduce um, the inference of the possible output of any deep neural networks by um, to into a linear programming problem. Furthermore, we can compute a lower bound and upper bound layer by layer, and then uh, apply these linear inequalities as the bounds into the final layer to certify whether the output of the final layer will always be the same class or not. If we can certify that for any um, uh, final layer's output, they belong to the same class, then we can finish this task of robust certification. So as we can see uh, on the other side is that the linear bounds can become looser and looser after propagating through layers. So how to combat this over relaxation? Um, one common strategy uh, for linear relaxation method for certification is to combine such linear relaxation with branch and bound. So we observe that for each value neuron, when their input is conditioned on being negative or being positive, then the neuron's output is linear with respect to the input. Given this observation, we can split each unstable neuron by adding an additional sign condition and solve the corresponding to some problems. So for each sub problem, when one neuron becomes a linear equation, so fewer neurons leads to apply linear relaxation. In this way, we can use more running time to improve the tightness of certification uh, for linear relaxation. So currently, linear relaxation combined with branch and bound is the most scalable verification for generic neural networks so far. And another, another major thread of certification method is called randomized smoothing. In randomized smoothing, we further change the inference protocol of a model to make the certification even more scalable. So at a high level, we first train a base classifier under some non-noise, which is usually Gaussian. Then we construct a smooth classifier F, such that for any given input, F predicts the most scalable label of the base classifier after some noise added to X. In deployment, we use the smooth classifier instead of the original base classifier. So for randomized smoothing, here's a running example. Suppose we have a cat image as X. Then we first sample several Gaussian noises and add them to the cat images. In this way, we get batches of Gaussian noise cat and we let the base classifier to give predictions for these Gaussian noise cats. Then suppose we can count that there are 80% of chance the prediction is cat and 15% of chance the prediction is dog. The final prediction is the most probable class, so it becomes to be cat. The purpose of using Gaussian noise and the majority voting is that if we slightly shift the center of the distribution, the probability cannot change too much. So there are still some overlap supports, which enables us to uh, certify the robustness against tiny perturbations. So for random smoothing, we can even have a closed form uh, formula to compute the certified radius of robustness. To compute so, we only need to query some statistics like top class probability, run up class probability, and the noise variance. So with this two main thread of certification approach, like linear relaxation and random mass smoothing, another way to further improve the server robustness is to combine with effective training approach. So like for linear relaxation, combined with branch and bound, we can reduce the upper bound of loss function during training to improve the certified robustness. And for randomized smoothing, we can train the model to predict correctly for noise inputs to achieve so. 
So after I introduced all these certification and the training approaches, uh, maybe you are interested on how far have these approaches achieved. So since 2017, the community has made remarkable progress on practical image classification uh, and ha have made them to be quite certifiably robust, like on MList, on Cyberton, and on ImageNet. Like on MList, which is a relatively small size data set, we can see that the current certified robustness has exceeded 94%, which means that for 94% of test input, now we are able to certify they are, the model is robust, allowing each pixel to have 30% of brightness change. And on the medium-sized Cypher 10, tolerating eight over 255 change per pixel, we can merely achieve 40% robust accuracy. So it means that there is still a gap to further improve the certified robustness on larger data set. Furthermore, if the data set becomes even larger, like ImageNet, currently uh, the state of the art uh, can merely achieve slightly higher than 30%. So though it, it is a state of the art, on ImageNet, the certified robustness is far from satisfaction and far from being usable in practice. So a brief summary, we can see that since 2017, there are many certification and robust training approaches being proposed to provide and improve the certified robustness for deep neural networks, like relaxation, like branch and bound, and randomized smoothing. With all these approaches, remarkable certified robustness has been achieved on small data set, but is still challenging for relatively larger data sets like ImageNet. And then, no certified robustness is more intensively studied for pinorm constrained adversary. The techniques have inspired and extended to provide certification under other threat models like semantic adversary, patch adversary, and more, like other papers in this se session will show. So I only introduced a very small portion of our SOK paper. As SOK, for the whole field of certified robustness, we not only provide a taxonomy, an overview, a current research directions discussion, but we also provide a discussion of blind spot, of challenges, of future directions, a benchmark for over 20 existing approaches, a state-of-the-art leaderboard, and a comprehensive open source toolkit. All these materials are actively maintained and regularly updated on this website. Thank you so much, and any questions are welcome. So any questions? So Ling Yi, my, my question is, I'll go back to your last uh, slide. You, you said um, there are many uh, methods proposed, right? So is there any high level takeaway for, for different methods that you summarize in your paper? Like, for example, your linear relaxation or randomized smoothing, uh, which methods is better in some scenario or cases? Like, Thank you, this is a great question. So uh, for, from the uh, theoretical side, all these approaches are derived from computing the worst case bound of the model under some change of the component of the system. Like um, and the, all these approaches like, are, are, are derived from computing the worst case bound uh, under the condition of input perturbation. So this is the theoretical side uh, takeaway or similarity among all this method. And on the practical side, uh, currently, uh, if we can tolerate more running time, then randomized smoothing uh, should be the best method at the current stage because it is the only approach that can provide certification on large scale image net data set. And if we could not tolerate uh, the change of the inference protocol, or if we could not tolerate more running time, then linear relaxation plus branch and bound, when they combined, is the state of the art. And currently, they can be applied to models with up to uh, one million uh, neurons. And we, we are currently in the progress to make a more scalable verifier from both engineering side and from theoretical side for linear relaxation uh, to make it fully scalable. And maybe in the future, it can support uh, large models like uh, uh, large language models. And it currently is, it is not at that stage, but we hope in the, it will be in that stage in the next few years. Okay, thank you very much. And let's thank the speaker again. Thank you. Yeah.